Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to create a Power Automate Cloudflow that will take an Excel file from an email attachment, save that file in SharePoint, and then send an email containing data from that file. To make this flow work, we will need to use a run script action to create a table in our file. I have another video on how to do that, so you should watch that video first before continuing here. I have a link to that video in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So in Power Automate, we're going to create an automated cloud flow. And our trigger is when a new email arrives. So we'll search here for our trigger. I'm going to use the Office 365 Outlook action. So we'll click Create. We can add a title later. We need to set up the email parameters. So when you open this, you can go ahead and click show all and see all of the parameters. In our example, the recipient email in the two line is going to be a department email. You notice that it's a drop down list and we want to enter a custom value so that we can put any email address in here. Once we've done that, we need to add in our sender line and it's another custom value. This is a system generated email. So the email address I'm putting in here is the address of that system. And then I'm going to choose yes for includes attachments and yes for only with attachments because this email always has a file attached. folder as well. Now, in this case, you could have the email go directly to your inbox. But in my case, I have an Outlook rule that when that email arrives from the system, it moves that email into a subfolder. And I like doing it this way so that I can trigger my flows from subfolders instead of from the inbox. And now that I have all of this set up, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the file. So we're choosing a new action, which is a SharePoint action called create file. And what this action does is it creates the file from the email attachment and it creates it in a SharePoint, wherever folder you select. So before you go forward with this, you'll want to potentially first create a folder. If you don't already have a folder that you want to place your file in. Once you've selected your folder path, the next thing you'll need to do is select the dynamic content from your trigger for file name. So you'll need to click see more. And then you're going to scroll down until you see attachments name. And then you're going to do the same for file content. Click see more and scroll down until you see attachments content. And what that will do is create the file in SharePoint based on the at email attachment from the trigger. So now before we go any further, we're actually going to run this flow. So I'm going to force the email from the system so that it, tr it triggers my Outlook rule, which then triggers Power Automate when a new email arrives to grab that email and to create the file. And we need to do that next so that we're able to work with that file in SharePoint. So let's go ahead and before we do anything else, we're going to run the flow. Okay, so I ran the flow and it created my file. And so the next thing I can do is click add an action. And the next action is going to be our run script action. So this is the point where if you haven't already watched the video on how to set up office scripts to run a script to create a table, you're going to need to do that before you can continue here, because you're going to need to be able to select that script from the list here in this action. So once again, we're selecting our location, site location from SharePoint. 
and then we're selecting our document library, and then we're selecting the file. So the file needs to be created before you can select it. So that's why I had you run this uh, flow up to the create file point. So now you can select your file now that it exists in there. So go to your file folder and select your file. And now that you've created your script, you can select the script from the drop down menu here. And now, before you go further, we're going to save once again, and we're actually going to force the flow to run again. And in this way, we'll be able to create our table so that we can go to the next step, which is a list rows present in the table. So we'll pause again here, we'll force our flow to run, and then we'll continue on. One word of caution, if you run your flow too soon, you might run into the SharePoint error where your file is locked for editing or locked by another user, some type of error like that. And you're going to need to actually wait a little bit longer. I would give it maybe at least seven minutes or so and then run the flow so that that error will clear on its own. Okay, so we ran our flow. It created the file and it created the table and now we're back here, we're going to add a new action and it's going to be a list rows present in table. And that's going to be an Excel online business action. So we select for that. And we once again have to go through the steps of selecting our SharePoint site and our document library. And then we select our file again. Now, when you get to this point where you can select the table from the list that's here, the drop down menu, do not select the table from the menu. Instead, what you want to do is enter a custom value. Now, your script, if you follow the script um, as I outlined it in the video, then your script will create a table called table one, which is the default setting for tables, unless you unless you change it to read otherwise, you will want to add that custom value here, whatever the name of your table is. So in this case, for me, the custom value is table one. And the reason that you need to do that is because every time your flow runs, it's essentially overwriting the previous file and wiping out the name of, or wiping out the table that was previously there. So even though your flow creates a new file over the previous file and then runs a script to create the table, it will still not, it will still wipe out whatever you have selected from the table from the drop down menu in this action here, unless you add the custom value, which is the name, same name of the table. So just keep that in mind that you need to do that or your flow may fail. So now that you've done that, we need to actually run the flow again. And we run the flow up to this list rows action because our next action is going to be to parse the JSON result from this action here. So once again, let's go up to save. And now we go in and we force our flow to run and we'll come back here to continue the next steps. Okay, so our flow ran successfully and I went into the flow run history and went and opened this list rows present in table. And I can see that the outputs are down here. And what I wanna do with those outputs is I wanna copy the whole thing. So I'm gonna copy the entire JSON output here and then I'm going to go in and edit. I can go to add a new action. And the new action we want is parse JSON. And the content here is going to be the dynamic content from your list rows present in table. So you'll want to select the the body and then 
use this link here for a use sample payload. And we'll go ahead and paste in that JSON and click done. And now that gives us a nice list of objects that we can work with. And that way we're able to set up our final action, which is our send email action. So after our parse JSON action, we'll add an e add a send an email action. That's going to be send an email v2 for Office 365 Outlook. Now for testing, I am not going to use dynamic content in here. I'm going to enter a custom value. And I'm going to put my own email address in here so that I can make sure that everything is running as I expect it to before I use any dynamic content. Because actually, my file has email addresses. And I'm going to send an email to each email address that it finds in that table. Now, here is where we can use dynamic content. So now, if I click dynamic content, you can see in my parse JSON action, I have 12 objects that I can work with. So for example, I have person username, I have person name, and I have other things like course title. So in the subject, I'm just going to add dynamic content of the course title. And then here is where I can fill out an email and I can write dear and person full name, this is your reminder for, and then I can add in more dynamic content. I can add in things like class ID and et cetera, et cetera. And then of course I can add more parameters down here, who the email is sent from, who they should reply to, et cetera. So now that we have that set up, you'll notice that it automatically added a for each loop. And that's because it's going to send an email um, for each row of your list rows present in table action. And in that way, everyone will get an email that we need to get an email to. So now that we have this, we'll save one more time and we can run our flow and test that out. But that is going to do it for this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them below. And as always, I will see you in that next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.